Hey everyone, in today's lesson, we're gonna look at how to build a color ramp, check our color ramp for accessibility using ratios, compare it against the text color, and then map uh, the colors in our color ramp to some sample uh, token or variable colors that will be used on components. Um, if you've never worked with a design system before, the organization part of this lesson might be a little complex, um, but if you are having trouble, if you are building a design system and you are having trouble mapping some of your colors, be sure to join the Slack at uicollective.co and Mike or myself will be able to help you or your organization out. Uh, also, just as an FYI, our design system is now available. You'll get access to all of these awesome components across light theme and dark theme as well. Uh, and it is compatible with variables in Token Studio. So with that said, let's dive in. So here what I have is just a sample primary brand color that we're going to be using, which is the uicollective.co purple. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, copy this down here and we'll use this primary brand color as the foundation for our starting point for our color ramp. So what I'm going to do and what I always like to do first, I start off with building my ramp lower and then I go slightly higher. And a good trick that I like to do is you can actually adjust the opacity. So right now we're on a white background and let's say the next color down, I want to maybe be a little bit lighter, just like that. But this as it stands is this hex coat at 80%. So this isn't a solid color. And what you can do is actually adjust it 80%. So again, with the white background, it does look a little bit lighter and draw a new rectangle and simply color match it. So I can see that this is now uh, the color for the next color in our color ramp. And then I just simply replace. Just like that. Let's keep things consistent. And now we can do the same thing. So let's just do two in either direction. Again, maybe set it to 80. I think that looks okay. And we'll do the same. Color match it. There's the new color. You know, maybe we'll do one more. So you do. Uh, oops. 80%. There we go. And again, it ultimately depends how many colors you want in your color ramp and you can adjust the opacity as such. But you can see how by doing that, it does create a nice, um, a nice even color ramp, uh, again, using the percentages of your opacity. Now, one thing when going up, to do, to do, to do sorry, let's bring this down here. One thing when going up is you can, ideally you'd be able to multiply it by 1.2 of whatever this color is. But if we pull up our color map, 1.2 in which direction? Are we talking this way, this way, this way? There's so many different variables that can go into play there. So when, let me just reset this back to our original. So when building your color ramp going up, it's okay just to eye it. It doesn't necessarily need to be super perfect. Now, sure, I'm sure there's some mathematical equations out there that will actually do that for you, but I'm not going to bring them into play here simply because I don't know them. So what I like to do is just simply do a nice adjustment, maybe a little bit lower, something that looks a little bit darker. And again, you can always plug and play. You don't always need to get your color wheel uh, right first, first try. A little bit darker. And again, uh, a little bit darker. There we go. So I can see that that is a really, really nice uh, color wheel. And one thing I want to do here is let's just remove, uh, let's make those square. Let's make the tops here square as well. And the bottom square on this one. We'll set the four, let's adjust those to zero. This one as well. And there we go. So there now we have a really, really nice, uh, even I think color ramp based on our primary brand color. So next, what we're going to do is actually uh, go over some ratios, how you can check to make sure that your color um, ramp here is accessible against other elements like your text colors. Now, when it comes to checking for accessibility, not every single color within your design system will match with every other single color within your design system. So it's really important to be strategic with how you map your different colors. But let's look, look at right now um, how to test maybe some base elements like a text color um, with some backgrounds, um, again, checking for accessibility. So let's just draw a little, a little shape and let's match it to uh, the color 
of the text within the UI Collective logo. And let's just say this is our uh, text body. Text body and the styling, 444-95555. So when it comes to checking for accessibility, the ratio that you tend to follow is three to one. So it needs to be three to one uh, accessible. And a way that you can do that is to use um, the web IA dot web AIM, uh, dot org uh, color contrast color checker. So what this will essentially do is check the contrast between your foreground color and your background color to test for things that are accessible. And again, usually the standards that we follow are uh, WCAG uh, AA. So let's just minimize that and let's bring in a couple colors here. Before we do that, maybe let's just put uh, the text maybe on the top, the bottom, and maybe one uh, in the middle. There we go. So here we have our text on our darkest of our color ramp, our, our brand default color, and then the lightest uh, color. So now let's do some quick checks. Let's take the background color. Actually, we'll take the foreground color to start. Oops, I didn't match that. Excuse me. Let me do that right now. There we go. So let's take this color, open up, or reopen up, excuse me, our contrast checker. So this will be our foreground color. And then, so I can see that works really well on white, but we are not using white. And then let me take uh, this color back up, bring back our background checker. And I can see that this combination currently is not accessible. So this is where you might introduce using white text if you were to use this color here as a surface color. But again, it's important to recognize that not, that not every single one of your colors will be a surface color. So again, map your surface colors accordingly. Let's then go back and check um, with the next one down. So I know that this is not accessible. It's gonna remove that. Let's check with our primary brand. Just the background color. And again, still doesn't work because we're only at a 2.29 uh, to one ratio. And now let's check with our very bottom color, lightest in the color ramp, which we created. Sorry for the flipping back and forth here. And now I can see that this is accessible and it passes our WCAG AA standards, which is the industry standard when it comes to accessibility uh, in providing enough contrast ratio. Now it doesn't meet our AAA, that's usually fine. Again, you're never gonna have an, an app or a platform um, that is 110% accessible. But again, WCAG AA is the industry standard. Now, something that's important to note here is I can see it passes with the normal text, which is perfect as what we have. It also passes with our large text, and it also passes um, with our graphical objects and user interface components. So things like an icon on that background, uh, you know, a text outline on that background or input outline, excuse me, on that background would work as well. So I know that this has a strong chance of being actually one of the surface colors for things we might use like an alert. So I hope that gives a quick overview as to uh, the ratios that we use to check for accessibility. Um, next, we'll look at uh, how to properly uh, name some of your colors, how to map those colors to different elements. All right, so next is look at uh, organizing our colors. So I've actually broken it out into a couple different categories here. We have the UI element, which is something like a text, border, surface, icon, so on and so forth. We have the role that that plays, whether it's the primary, secondary, tertiary, so on and so forth. The status, so this might be something if it's a default button, a, uh, a hover button, disabled button, so on and so forth. And that's going to map to the individual token uh, or variable uh, and the color code itself. So we'll go through a couple quick examples together for a default and a hover, just to show you how that interacts. Before we do that, let's just go ahead and name the colors in our uh, color ramp. So this will be, let's just make this white because I know from the last part of this lesson that this video is not accessible. This will be our purple uh, default. Then we have our purple light. We have our purple lighter. Then we have our purple lightest. And again, leaving this uh, in the darker text because I know that this combination here is accessible. Now let's just move up the line. So we go our purple dark, purple darker, and our purple darkest. So now let's just say for an example that I really like this default color 
as uh, you know our primary uh, surface uh, for things like a button, so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is let's map it out. So this is our surface, and I want it to be our primary button. And now I also want that to come into play for our status, which is a default. So say it's your standard button as is. It hasn't been clicked. It hasn't been hovered. It's the second you load a page. That is the color of your button. So what I can do is actually name that token surface primary, surface primary, primary. Let's just draw a quick rectangle. Let's color map that to our purple default. There we go. And then add the hex code for it. There we go. So there we have our surface primary uh, color. Now, what if it's an on hover? So let's just go through a quick example here, actually. And let me just build this out as is. So let's just say button, uh, center it, add some auto layouts, add a fill. So again, this is our primary button or primary surface. So there's our button. We'll make it white text. And there we go. There is. Uh, our primary button using our surface primary. Now, what if I want hover? So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to take uh, this here as an example and put set this to our surface uh, action hover. So what's going to happen is I'm going to copy the arrow, or I can't, so let me bring in a new one, and say this is the surface of our hover, which is an action. So our surface action hover action hover is equal to bring this over let me just forgot to map the top one there again if you're a new designer you never worked with a designer or design system before this might seem a little complex so if it is be sure to let us know we can help you out surface action action hover equals our surface action hover and then these here is what you actually put uh, within your tokens or your variables to actually map them out. So surface action dash hover is going to equal, oops, should not have been caps. Hover is going to equal, bring these down. I believe it was the second cover, color. That one. That way, just change the background color. Again, these components I'm putting here just for a reference. So what this is essentially saying is we now have our primary, our surface primary. We now have our surface action hover. So anything that is using our surface primary when hovered is going to uh, look like this. So using the buttons as an example, this would be our default button. And when hovered, it's going to switch to our surface action one color. And that is how you can organize and map your colors from a UI element all the way to a token or variable. And here's just your friendly reminder to sign up for uicollective.co. You'll get access to all of our design system training and sweet free templates like this one, our token variables map. And we also did just launch our design system as well, where you get access to all these awesome components for your design system, but this is a paid template. Hope to see you online, UI Collective.